Hi, I'm Kate Sargent from Coral and Slate Designs and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a pocket fold invitation like this. Um, so that opens out like this. So you've got two um, you've got two inserts in there. So you can use those obviously for whatever you want. I've got an information card and an RSVP or response card. Um, so it's like this. I always like to make it a bit bit pretty at the back um, and then information cards you can obviously put whatever you want the most popular things I find are um, hotels children and gifts those are the, the main things uh, and then you can if you want have a map or directions on the back um, so we're going to be showing you how how to make make those today um, so they start off as a big old sheet like this um, ignore the fact that I've got two RSVPs I've wanted them as samples um, so yeah, it's going to start off like this and then the exact mirror opposite on the reverse. So this is what our, our back is going to look like, um, which is here. Um, and so obviously that's got the reverse of the items as well. And then this is the, the band which goes over, over the front. Okay, so that's what we're going to be making. Um, so first of all, the things that you're going to need. Um, so the main thing, my trusty friend, uh, is the guillotine. Um, this one is, I think it's size A3. I'll put that in the in the details. Um, but yeah, size A3 one, um, and they're, they're very, very handy. Um, so that's the first and the main thing you're going to need. Um, arguably, you could sort of fudge the other things that I'm going to show you, um, although for the best results, and if you're doing a lot, I'd, I'd recommend getting the other bits. The next thing is a scorer. Um, now this one has a, um, a trimmer attached as well, <coughs> um, but you don't need to have that. Um, and that comes with this, and so you score, we'll go through that in a minute. Um, the next things, again, you could possibly do without, but it's going to be a lot easier, are a scalpel and um, a safety ruler to save your fingers um, and that's going to be for these sorry for the bank uh, these points here and I don't know if you can yeah for there and there um, I have um, one of these boards which is a self-healing healing board um, but again to be honest if you're only using one your um, when you get your printed items delivered to you they'll probably come with a a board like that <clears throat> excuse me and you can just you could just do it on that that'd be absolutely fine as well um so those are a couple of things you need pretty much all of these like with everything you can get on amazon or your local you know craft or stationery shop um the next things you're going to need are um double-sided tape um now i there's lots of different types i tend to use this one simply because, and you'll see why when we move on, um, it doesn't have a backing strip because otherwise you're going to have to stick it down and then you're going to have to take the edge off. And if you've got 100 invitations you need to do, I promise you it's going to save you time. Um, so that's the next thing you're going to need. Um, I think this is 12, yeah, 12, 12 mil. Um, if you can get a bit thicker, then, then that's fine too. Don't get thinner because it won't work. Uh, you're going to need standard old scissors um, and some ribbon for, um, for when you're tying around the bands. Um, or you could use twine or string or like a lace, you know, whatever you're looking for. And then you could definitely do um, without this if you didn't want to. Um, it's a Fisker's hole punch and that's to make the holes for here. Um, and they're just basically a smaller hole. If you don't want to spend, I think it's about, I don't know, eight, eight pounds maybe on Amazon. If you don't want to spend that, then that's that's fine. You could choose a hole punch and obviously the holes are going to be a bit bigger. So um, okay, so those are all our bits that we need. Um, so now I'm going to show you the different steps um, to making it. Um, I do it in a certain order and there is reason to it. I won't bore you with all of that. Um, if you want to, if you find it easier doing it in different order, that's fine. Um, but this is the order I found um, the easiest, I guess. And um, what I'd recommend is, so obviously I'm going to do this from start to finish. If you've got 50 of these, 
um, or any multiple, um, don't do one at a time just because it will take you longer because you'll be going off from the um, from the guillotine to the scissors to the it will take you longer so do a process at a time so do all this all the snipping all the guillotine all the scalpel and do it all at all at once it'll be a lot quicker um, okay so let's go on to the steps Snip up here and across um, and I've done that on on both sides um, you don't need to snip here just yet um, and we'll go into why um, in a little bit but so your first step just with ordinary scissors coming up the edge um, and up to as accurately as you can um, up to this point point just here um, okay so next we're going to cut along the line and you'll get used to um, sort of where your your lines are on your on your guillotine um, I recommend getting getting used to it to begin with so obviously you just come down to that line don't go all the way down um, and then we're going to do that one on the other side as well um, so obviously here you need to be really careful because um, if it's not straight a the artwork isn't going to look quite right um, but also when you fold it um, it'll become much more apparent if you haven't got that right um, so now this bit uh, you can do with the scalpel but I find it easiest just while I'm at the guillotine just chop the tops off okay so we're starting to get our our shape um, just put that aside for one minute and we're just going to chop out our um, our inserts now you could have these printed as um, as cards on their own. Um, the reason I I don't um, is simply because um, these aren't sort of typical sizes, so I find it easiest um, to just do it on on one big sheet um, and get it done that way. So I'm just going to chop along the edges and if you do this edge and this edge first a it means you don't have to do it for this one and this one but also it means they're exactly straight so when you put them in the pocket fold um, they're going to sit perfectly whereas you could if you mix them um, if you do them one at a time they might not be be perfect and as with anything to do with the wedding we want it to be perfect Okay, so here we go. And so that's what I mean. They're exactly, exactly lined up. Okay, so we're going to put those to one side for the minute because we don't need those. Um, and I'm just going to quickly finish off chopping my, my band. Again, we don't need that until much nearer the end. Um, so on this one, I'll just quickly show you. So um, this um, is going to go on the front. Um, you could either do your name, so um, the bride and groom um, would be Annabelle and Michael, um, or you can do um, personalised ones, so you have their, their names, um, so that's an idea as well. Um, so once you've done that, you can get rid of your um, guillotine, and next we're going to move on to our scorer. Um, so you can get different ones of these... Um, from uh, from different different places, Amazon craft shops, anything like that. Um, and what we want to do is do scores down here and here, and then across the bottom for the pocket, and then oh, here and and here. Um, right. So I'm just going to now. I've got used to doing doing this now, but you can if you want to. Um, you might have seen I do have score marks on my artworks um, so if you're not sure about doing this maybe do the scoring first and then chop um, but I've uh, I've done these a couple of times so I'm, I'm used to knowing where I need to go so I'm going to put one there one at the bottom again this bit needs to be really accurate because if it's even slightly skew with when you fold it um, 
it could be tiny, but it'll fold slightly off center like that. So you just need to make sure you do this, you do this part really carefully. And so I'm just gonna come along here. And like I said, if you do this in stages, so you do all your scoring, all your um, cutting, um, but just do it carefully because someone decided to ring just as I was <laughs> in the middle. So um, it interrupted the video, so I apologize. So we've done our scores here, here, and at the top here. So now we're just gonna do along the edges. Um, so I just do that, basically I can, you can't quite see from there, but I make sure I've got the same gap between this green part here and the, um, the invitation all the way up. Again, because if it's not straight, um, these things show up so much more than you think they're going to. So if you take that bit of that bit of time um, at the beginning, then I promise you it'll it'll work out um, better in the long run. Okay, so now we've got all our um, scores. So before we start folding that, we're just going to get our scalpel now and come along this edge here. So we're done with that now. Um, like I say, you don't need to have um, a self-healing mat if, if you don't want to. Just make sure you put something um, something down like this. this. is really a really thick cardboard um, that came from printers. Okay, so, um, and a, a safety ruler as well. Um, so what I do, um, just because it minimizes um, the risk of making this point look, look messy, I start from the top and go outwards, um, and start from the, the middle, I should say, and come down. Um, okay, so, let's just do this. And again, you just want to be as careful as you can. You want a nice sharp blade um, and a, as much of a swift fluid motion as you can. So. Um, you can see I've done one, and like I said, if you go from the top down, it's going to um, give you a cleaner line. And do that this side as well. Okay, so now you've got your, your point. Um, right, so the reason I didn't tell you to cut these off just yet is because I find if you do it after you've done the scoring, then you can get that, that point um, the best. So you can do that with the scalpel again if you want. Um, I find it easier to just do this bit with this little bit with the scissors. Um, okay, so now you should have a shape uh, like this. Okay, um, so you've got your your points and you've got everything all lined up. So I'll just get rid of this. Um, so now we can we can fold. Okay, so you're going to fold your your edges. And you're going to fold. So it's, you can see it's really starting to starting to come together now. Um, obviously, with regards to design, I've sort of, it's sort of embellished. You could just have that as a plain colour. Um, if you look on my um, website, um, you'll see loads of different um, designs and ranges. Um, so now we are going to um, use our our double sided tape. Um, don't well. I've tried using glues, and to be honest, I just find them messy, um, and I think they dry out quite easily. So this does take a bit longer, um, but I personally find it's the most um, secure, secure way of doing it. So I tend to use three pieces. I'm just going to do it and then show you where I've put it. Um, so I don't know if you can, you can sort of see. So I do one going across the top at, the, at a diagonal and then one going down and one going down. Um, like I say, this is quite a sort of laborious um, part. But again, you just have to make sure it's, it's right. Um, so I just fold down, I don't know if you can see, fold down the edges like that to make a point. Um, okay, so once we've got that, um, I fold it and I always sort of line it up by eye before I give it a, a good push down. 
Okay, we just want to make sure that's nice and stuck. Okay, so we're in. So, yeah, if you hadn't done your scoring correctly, you'll find that this might be coming like that or like that. So, you know, if you get the straight edges, you'll get it perfectly. So you can see there's nothing um, poking out the either side of there. Um, okay, so now we can put in our... Um, our information and RSVP cards. So we can put those in there. Um, and so now if you'd had, um, sometimes you might put um, request the pleasure of the company of dot, 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 dot. So here you might want to write in your guests, your guest names. Um, so now we've got that, we can fold it over. And again, and there you have it. Okay, so again, if, if these hadn't been straight or the scores hadn't been straight, you'll find that this will be sort of coming, coming off a bit, like that. <laughs> um, so yes, you just want it nice and neat. So now we're going to come back to our tag and with our, um, our hole punch, just going to put it on the edges. Okay, so now we've got that so you can see the um, the little holes a bit better now. Uh, and then for your for your ribbon or whatever you're going to use. Um, so for this size, I tend to use about, uh, it's a random number I know, but about 56, 57 centimetres. So then you're just going to thread this through. It's the fiddly bit. Uh, and you want it as in the center as you can by eye. So there we go. Okay, I'll just clean this down so we can see. And then you're onto your final stage. So you're just gonna pop it on. Do a knot first. And we're almost there. Um, and obviously you can do this in in any colour or design. You could do it um, in um, a portrait or a landscape if you didn't want to do square. So then you've got your, your little bow. This one I did as a um, sample for Hampton Court Palace. So if you if your venue has a logo, I think that's quite a nice use um, quite a nice touch to use. You will need to check with um, the, the venue that they're happy to use your your um, their logo on your invitation. So there you have it. Um, let me know how you you got on. Um, I hope you find it find it helpful. Um, and obviously that's just um, just one design, but you can completely make it um, your own. I've just done a Superman one, which looks really fun. Um, but just a couple more, so you can um, you can really do any style for this. Um, so we've got pretty, um, and this um, opens out. Like this is the the first um, pocket fold I did actually, um, and that's been been a very popular design. Um, or there's a a twirl one which looks like this, um, and that opens up. So you can use the um, you can use patterns in in different ways. I think they make a nice little um, little statement. Um, and then I've got one like this. This one is um, Pride and Prejudice in Jane Austen's handwriting, which is quite cool. Um, and then, um, you know, if you want to go something funky, you know, it can be a traditional format, which um, is what this is, quite elegant, but quite a funky, funky design. Um, so, yeah, make it a bit different. That's the RSVP. So, yeah, put your information, your RSVP in there. Um, so yeah, it doesn't need to be, um, you know, traditional if you don't don't want it to be. It can still be quite quite funky. Um, so yeah, so let me know um, how you get on. I'd love to see um, your your invitations and how you found it. And um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, so I'm Kate Sargent from Coral and Slate Designs, um, and that's www.coralandslate.co.uk. You'll see loads of different designs and ideas 
um, and hopefully I'll see you soon for the next video. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.